Okay, welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real, the largest podcast made by real estate agents and for real estate agents. My name is DJ Paris. I am your guide and host through the show. And today is our monthly series called Coaching Moments with Ryan D'April. Now, uh, let me tell you a little bit about Ryan if you're unfamiliar or new to the show. Uh, Ryan D'April is a progressive thought leader focused on providing for his agents and staff. His strengths are his motivational skills, his coaching style, and his dedication to training. Uh, Ryan has 14 offices with D'April Properties uh, throughout Chicagoland, also Wisconsin, Indiana, and Michigan, and has hundreds and hundreds of brokers that he uh, coaches and trains. Uh, D'April Properties is a coaching company with eight strategic coaches who work week in and week out with every agent individually, focusing on business planning, coaching, and accountability. Now, if you'd like to take your career to the next level, or if you're just not getting the attention you need from your firm, check out D'April Properties. Visit D'April Properties, and that's D-A-P-R-I-L-E, properties.com. Once again, Ryan, welcome to the show from Lake Geneva. Thanks, DJ. Yeah, in beautiful Lake Geneva. Loving life right now. It's great to be up here. I, I just got back. For the ones, for everyone listening, you won't be able to see. Ryan is very tan. I am very pale. I just got back from uh, Tampa, Florida. So I've been in Savannah, Georgia, and Tampa in the last month, both places where I should have gotten a tan. I do not tan. Ryan, uh, Ryan is very tan. So I'm very jealous. Yeah, we're lucky. We, uh, my family lives here in the summertime. So I, I usually work uh, Monday through Thursday in the Chicagoland area and then Thursday nights. I zip up here. I work out of this office. It's. Uh, uh, there isn't a better place in the world to be, in my opinion. It's just, it's, you, you get up here after? I don't. You know, I, I've driven through. I've never actually spent time there. So I need to, well, I need to make a weekend on. of it. Yeah. I'll take you, I'll take you and your girlfriend on the boat and I'll show you guys around. Yeah. See, you don't want to make that offer because we will literally take you up on it and be up there in a I week. I would love so. to do it. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. We'll, we'll, we'll it would for be sure great. do it. Yeah. All right, so you ready to jump into this? I'm getting a little more comfortable with the Facebook Live thing. I think the past three sessions Good. I was freaking out. So now I'm like, okay, nerves a little yeah. solid. I think I'm okay with I, this. I think I've done now 50 episodes now uh, total where I'm, I'm on video and I'm not still comfortable with it. So, because I take drinks of water a lot and I always think, does yeah. that, is, that, is that insulting to the guest? Do the, you know, I don't know. Um, but I don't, maybe there's not a right way to do it. But yeah, so, so what, do you, what do we want to talk about today in our coaching okay. session? Yeah, so here we are. We're coming into July, or second half of the year. Um, I put together, I think I told the listeners and yourself, I'd put a couple slides together um, to give you guys some visuals on uh, how to look at your business. So this is our dashboard as a company, how we use it. And then I just figured let's take some real life agent data. And I think we could all relate to it. And let's look at, you know, the importance of having a CRM, right? Um, we call ours an EOS, an entrepreneur operating system. And like how you have to use this, um, and it, it's a really it's a combination of, of of technology and accountability. Um, a lot of people, what I don't like about CRMs is that people think it will do it for them. Sure. It, it's just a, it's a tool. I mean, really, coaching is is the critical element behind this and how to use it. And so I figured, why don't I use some visuals and um, coach to a couple of our agents uh, snapshot, uh, get an overview of where their business is you know, here on June 25th or 6th, whatever the date is, mm. and say, hey, how are we going to look at the next half of the year? What do we need to look for? And now I start, time to start thinking about what's 2021 going to look like. Sure. So um, how about I share my screen? Great. And, and we, we've noticed as well, and I'm sure your agents have, is that, you know, here in Chicago, in the Chicagoland area, um, and, and I don't know about Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, although I imagine uh, it's similar, is, is things are back. Real estate is back and it's oh. our agents are as busy as ever. Yeah, it's, it's, we're back and we're in action. In fact, there's not enough inventory out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's our issue. And that's across the board. Um, things are flying off the market. And um, so we need some inventory out there. And so you really need to be working with your prospective sellers and explaining and to them and educating on them. If you are selling now is the time because the supply is low and demand is really high. And when supply is low and demand is high, price goes up. So now is a really good time to position yourself to market uh, your home. Lots of multiple D offers. Yeah. Hey, DJ, um, I, it says sharing disabled. I think you need to allow me to share my I screen. Will Post do disabled that. attendee screen sharing. Yeah. You so. should be good now. All right. Let me try it. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to go to my desktop, share this. 
And then I'm going to need to move my picture out of the way. So let's, and, let's, let's, yes. And for all of our listeners who aren't watching this, I'm going to be describing as well to make sure you have a, a good idea of what, what we're looking at here in a moment. Yeah. And I blacked out our agent's name and whatnot to, uh, to protect the innocent here. Um, let me move some of the stuff. Okay. So we're looking at a snapshot here. This is a, a an agent. Uh, I have a couple of different agents to give you some um, different uh, examples and uh, perspectives on this. So here's what we need to start looking at. You know, do you, are you, do you have an understanding of where your business is going and where you're going to end up? We have something over here called our current year forecasts. This comes in, now this is for the agents that use this tool. Okay. Sure. Uh, that are active and engaged. This forecast usually is pretty spot on within $1 million and $1 million in volume is very low. Uh, you know, it's not low, but it's not that uh, the Delta is not that big there. So sure. this agent's uh, goal you could see is $15 million. So their and annual it, sales goal is 15 million. Their mm -hmm. forecast uh, according to the tool is, is about 15 million. That's exactly right. Uh, this agent has closed 8.675 million year to date with another basically $3 million uh, uh, pending under contract. So, you know, approaching $12 million. And then I'll show you if we come over to here, we have some pie charts representing these other two. So this agent has $965,000 in active clients and 2.6 million in prospects. Now, this 2.6 so, yeah, million- Can you explain, can, I, can we back up just a minute? So what is, what is active? So you have 965,000 in active prospects and then, uh, or active clients rather. And Correct, so those are exactly. deals that are pending that haven't yet closed? No, $2.8 million is pending. That's under oh, got contract. It. Okay. This person has $965,000 in either people in a car with them or a listing that Got is it. active. And if you go down to prospect, uh, this is prospects. The next slide show, I'll, 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 we show you the, we break up on how the active are. Got it. Then we have your prospects. That's your pipeline. These are people that are not yet listed or not yet in the car with you. This dollar amount only goes in here if you rate them. And we tell everybody, you need to be 90% certain they're going to transact this year. Because if you are, then they go to here. Because so- you're going to see we have warm closing this calendar year, cold, not certain they're going to hire me, cold closing next calendar year. What I like and enjoy about this is this particular agent could tell they already have $5.5 .5 million booked for next year. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with what you're seeing up here. Now, this agent's goal is $15 million, and it's, it's not even July yet, and they've already sold or have under contract $12 million. I'm pretty certain this agent might hit a $17 million year here. Sure. The Delta is this $2.6 million of prospects and how well this actives if the homes are priced properly. Convert, so yeah, yeah. exactly. And so I'll move off the slideshow, but these are things that you, it, it, this is a slide, but we could actually click on this and we could click on that. And we say, how well are you in tuned with these individuals? These certain, not, you know, not certain that they're going to hire you, that's about a million and a half dollars of business, you know, so we could click on it. We could really get uh, granule. Is that the right word uh, sure. with this particular agent and ask, what are you doing? What's the marketing collateral is getting in the hands? Do they know you? Do they like you? Do they trust you? Are you in tune with them? What's your comp competition? And then what's the lead source? Because the lead source really indicates the probability of them converting or not. So, so, so just, just to, to let, to let our listeners know what, what, what we're uh, specifically talking about right now is Ryan's got a chart uh, that lists all the prospect, all the prospects in a pie chart, basically by warm, uh, warm, cold. Uh, there's a couple different versions of cold, basically warm and cold. And so the idea here is that you you can see on on this individual's uh, chart that there's about eleven some percent of his prospects for next year's pipeline um, that we're not sure which way they're going to go. We're not certain he, they've been identified as as uncertain. So it's about eleven percent of their 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 pipeline. Right. Correct. And for those that are listening to the podcast, you know, I, I'll encourage you to, to go to the keeping it real Facebook page so you can see these visuals here because it yes. would really help you out. And I really like to coach, you know, with the whiteboards and the visuals and, and storytelling because it helps individuals learn um, and, you know, incorporate this data better. So I really encourage you to go and, and look at this. And by um, the way, we will also put links to these slides, uh, for Ryan, if you can make them available, as long as all the sure. uh, appropriate information is, is removed, but we'll, um, we'll make those available yeah. for, for, or as well yeah. in the notes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And we have all the intellectual property uh, uh, protected on all this stuff as well. And this is our Good. beta beta right here. Our, all right. So let me move on to the next one. Okay. Sure. So, but so, so this is how you could forecast and look at your business 
Okay, and get an understanding. And this is how real estate agents, and we have this for mortgage lending as well. Um, this is how you have to run your business. So many people drive blind, and it's the thing that I dislike about this business the most. It's why I built this, is I cannot see how we could just go into this business and just see where, what happens, you know, just where's it going to come. I don't like being that, you know, paper cup in a parking lot going whichever way the wind blows. You know, I like sure. to set, you know, a goal, right? And then right. I like to know what actions I need to take to get there. And then I like to monitor. And then here I am in July, coming into July, what's my next year shaping up to be? And that's not these cold nuts that are going to hire me. These are these are this, and I could scroll down and we could look at the prospect lead sources. This is a snapshot. The next uh, snapshot will give me a better version of this to show you guys. So Great. let me get out of here and let me open up another one here. So this is another agent uh, in the organization Hold on here. Um, this agent does a little bit higher volume. Um, this agent, his goal was to do 35 million in volume this year and is forecasted to do about $39 million in volume. You see that this agent's closed 13 and a half million year to date and has another basically $9 million or $8 million, $8.3 million pending. It's so incredible. year to date, this agent's at $22 million. But what I was able to do is um, I was able to take a, a, a tighter snapshot to come down and use some coaching uh, things here. So all of this is uh, drawn up to help um, really roadmap, process map, for our listeners and our viewers here, how you look at sales. Sales is not an art. It's a process. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's, there's a little bit of art, but it's majority of process. And I look at it as a manufacturing process. So let's look at a couple things here. So, so the agent's goal is to do 35. Our forecast has this agent at $39 million. Now, what are the, what are the X factors out there? Yeah. Well, this agent has $10.7 million in active clients. I mean, buyers and sellers. So you see, I, I have a question here. What's your client mix? Buy versus sell. So it comes down to here. And you see that this agent has 79.4% of their business is listings. These yeah. are active listings. So pricing is important for an accurate forecast. So when I work with this particular agent, we'll look at that. We'll click on that pie chart. The listings will come up. Hey, where are you? How long is it in the market? How priced are there? What's the dialogue you have in your, with your seller? What's the seller's why? You got to know the why. So you can help guide them to where they want to go. But so if you take that out, right? I mean, not all buyers buy, not all active listings sell. So right. that's where, you know, this particular agent's at $22 million a year today. That's fantastic. But we have about $17 million of what ifs. You follow yes. what I'm saying? Yes. And, but if we could work on this on a weekly basis and be aware and see what's going on, we're better able to manage our day-to-day -day activities to ensure that $17 million of business that this particular person has booked, right? Right. Will close. Not to mention, we have six more months of the year left. So, I mean, there's a really good chance that this particular agent does hit the $40 million mark. Not bad for the fifth year in real estate, right? Wow. So, that's uh, really not bad. <laughs> yeah. This, this is not a team. These are individuals, by the way. Incredible. Um, so let's look at a couple things. So again, I come over here and so I said, all right, let's look at the active. What's your client mix? Buy versus sell. Well, we know that this person has $7 million in active buyers just by looking at this and $3 million, excuse me, listings and $3 million of buyers. So when I work with this agent, I'm going to say, let's look at your pricing. Let's make sure that the seven and a half million dollars of business is going to sell. How right. are you priced? What's your strategy? Where's your case shiller? Where's your broker metrics? How are you informing and educating your client? What is the conversation going? Are they just asking you about your marketing? Are you bringing them to the slide supply and demand? Are you talking about national pricing? Are you talking about national supply and demand? Are you talking about the regional Chicagoland or the Southwest Milwaukee or Wisconsin or the Northeast Indiana pricing and then supply and demand? And then your local you know, pricing and supply and demand. There's so many factors that you have to bring in and let your sellers be a part of the conversation. That's how I'd be able to shift and look at this. So that's why it's not just the technology. Okay. That's why we say we're a coaching company. It's really getting granular with this and, and understanding what's going on with these individuals business. So right. So, so right, you're, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're, you're making a really important point, I think, which is to say that we have this, uh, this X factor of, of, 
you know, a lot of a lot of money at play here. The vast majority of this particular agent's current deals that may or may not close are listings. And so this now, yeah, this now begs the question: How are we doing with each one of the pricing on those uh, listings? And what yeah. are we bringing? What are we bring when we do need to adjust a price and when we do need to adjust expectations to the seller? What mm -hmm. data and facts do we have to actually back up the claim so we can actually get this property sold? Um, that that's really really a, a, an important point. I'm glad you, you brought that up. Yeah. And this is how serious we take this business. Again, this is an agent five years in the business. This is almost a million dollar income earner. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, partner with somebody really work closely on this business. And, and boy, that's, you know, that's a lot of money to make, but it's also a lot of money not to make. Once you get there, you got to maintain it. Right. And you could take it from various levels. The other particular agent that I was on, you know, that's a 300 plus thousand dollar income earner. Right. We work on this on a daily basis. We know where our business is. Um, you know, and there are individuals that will log into their dashboard or what we call ours, our dashboard. That's what the name is it. And, uh, you know, once every four weeks and there's our, they're in it on every day, every day. And it's, it, it's really, you know, your, your attention is where your intention goes, right? It's yes. what are you focused on? And, and this is why these, this technology is incredibly important to have, but it's, 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 it's a two way street, man. It takes two to make a thing go right. Right. So it's not just the technology, it's a human being driving it behind there. And I tell everybody, you want to get in your car and, and drive blindfold. Why are you running your business blindfold? Right. So let's, let's move on. Let's look at some other parts of this. Okay. Can sure. you see my cursor moving around? Yes. Okay, great. So now I want to look at this prospects, $6.5 million prospects, right? Yes. Which only the warm are going up here. Right. I, right. I, I highlighted the 6.5 to show you. We don't take cold next year and put it up in here. That's why the forecast is accurate. Um, but what's the lead source on this, right? So now I know on this prospect lead, right? I know that seven and a half million dollars of active listings or active clients are listings. So we just talked about how do we help you there with the pricing. Mm -hmm. But now we have $6.5 million of prospects that you're saying are warm. We're going to close this year. What's your lead source? Lead source is going to tell you everything. Yes. Your number one lead source is your network. Right. So you're going to see she's got 25% of her leads or his leads are from the network, but 57% are referrals. Correct. Network stronger than referral network. Yeah. Referral network stronger than open house. Open house listing leads are probably pretty equal. You know, purchase web leads are probably the least, um, sure. you know, effective, um, uh, but regardless, um, now we can have a conversation on the strength of this warm pool right. and what are the activities that you're doing with that 57% that's referral network. I, I hope you're not just sending them listings from the MLS. I hope they're getting marketing collateral in the mail. I hope they're meeting you with them with a cup of coffee. I hope you're engaged with them. There's a lot of money at stake here. And now we're able to have a dialogue about what's going on with your business. And then we can come over here to prospect status. But any questions? I, I, I have a quick question. Yeah, sure. quick question for you. So we're looking at, pro this is a, a very successful $35 million uh, goal of, uh, you know, uh, broker. Um, they're, they're obviously, they're probably on pace to do 40 million or so. Um, and I'm, we're looking at their prospective lead sources. And so it, it, at the chart we're looking at, um, it's about 15% is coming from their existing sphere of influence, uh, otherwise known as their network. And about 57% is coming from referrals from their network or from their previous, yeah, from the previous clients or network. My question is, what is a, for you've seen, obviously this is a very successful agent. Is that a pretty typical breakdown? About 15% of, of the prospective future business is gonna come from your existing network and then about almost 60% coming from referral or d does it normally look different than that? It looks different. It depends on the activities of the agent. Got it. It really truly depends on the act. You know, I, I meet, you know, I've met agents who 90% of their businesses come from face, uh, excuse me, from uh, Zillow, right? Yeah, and they said sure. it's the best lead source. Sure. Two years later after coaching, 80% of their businesses come from their network. Right. You know, and, it, and, it, and then it starts it, and then all of a sudden they're 50-50 network and referral network. So it depends on the point of your career, how well you are with your network. This particular agent has got so much from referral network. It's because this particular agent does such a good job with their network yeah. that they get a ton of referrals from it. it so there's no, like, it just really depends on uh, the makeup of the activity of the particular agent. But um, it's, this is a good point for all of our listeners to think, 
do I have a system in place that is actively tracking where my clients come from? You know, what am I projected to do this year? Um, how warm are, are the leads and clients I currently have? And, and right. how do we actually use that data to then improve our efficiency and effectiveness? Correct. And most, most brokers probably, maybe they have a tool. Most firms are going to provide some version of a CRM, but certainly mm -hmm. not a lot of analytical uh, predictive uh, tools like, like what we're looking at. Um, but I suspect mo many of our listeners are thinking, you know, boy, I'd really love to have a, a predictive modeling tool like this. So we, so I pulled up that referral network. It comes out to $4.3 million of the $6.5 million. Remember this particular agent says, Hey, I'm 90% certain this business is going to close this year. That's why the forecast says 39 million, right? This right. particular agent has closed $22 million a year to date, has another $10 million in active. Let's put it at $32 million. Let's figure out how the pricing is. So we make that sure that's a real 32 mil. And then I have $70 million that not yet signed the listing agreement. They're not yet in the car with me, but I am 90% certain of that $4.3 million of that is a referral from your network. That's not your network. That's a referral from your network. So they're one step away from being a stranger to you. So nice. I have a little thing. How engaged are they? Do they know you? Do they trust you? Do they like you? What actions are you taking to increase your percentages of the conversion? And so we so, look so at So I, I want to pause just for another second. So Ryan just said something really, really important. So he said, hey, look, we're looking at this agent, 57% of their prospective business is referrals from their existing network. These are, as Ryan said, you know, they're sort of second tier uh, from uh, best, best are your existing network. These are referrals. So they are at risk. So then Ryan's saying, how engaged are you with each one of these clients? Now, that we see 60% of your, your future income is, is going to come from this referral network. Are you doing enough to stay engaged? Do they trust you? Do they like you? What are you doing to really de deepen that relationship? Correct. Absolutely. And then we're going to look at the statuses, right? Right. So we're looking at the stat. Now remember, we are in prospects, okay? We have statuses for active. We have statuses for pending. So I'm just giving you a, uh, a snapshot of the prospect stuff here, right? So you know, schedule listing consultation on hold, needs to sell a home before buying, listing presentation. There's so much we could dive into this stuff. So there's times that you got to work in your business. There's times that you got to work on your business. There's times you got to just stop and pause mm -hmm. and analyze your business. And where are you and where are your actions? And that's why we call it an entrepreneur operating system over a CRM. Okay, right. so this is our EOS. This is our dashboard. Uh, so um, anyways, so I just went over through this with you and uh, I'm going to escape out of here and then I'll show you another element here. Oh, close lead source. Let's come down to close. Okay. So this particular agent here, and I just highlighted a couple things right now. I'm in the close pie chart. This particular agent has closed $7.3 million from their network directly this year. That's and, amazing. Um, I, I can highlight and it'll tell me what, how much came from the referral from the network, how much came from listing leads, how much came from open house. Right. And it does a couple of things. It makes the agent aware, but it also programs the agent's subconscious mind of how important this network is to your business. We have a saying, your network is your net worth. Right. And so what is your, what's your marketing campaign? What's your, what's your, own personal campaign to being engaged with your network. What are your activities and how conscious are you? And then how many hours a day are you spending on this? You know, we do, we, we are not of the cold call approach at our company. In fact, we don't even make calls. You know, uh, it is pure personal. It's pure relationship based. Um, you know, our business is life consulting. It's not selling homes. That's why I don't think the disruptors really have a chance. And after 20 years, they're still losing hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, trying to cut the real estate agent out. It's like, look, you guys, this is, this is a high emotional transaction. Um, we are having really in-depth conversations. There are tears being shed. There's hands being held. Uh, damn it. I love this business, you know, and how much involved we get in with it, but it's because of the emotional experience people are going through when they're moving themselves or their family and they're, they're taking these huge shifts. Well, you know, they're going to hire the people that they know, that they like, and that they trust. So if you want to build your business, you better have a network. And I don't care if you don't have one, you're getting into business and you say, I don't have your network. So what? We'll build one over two years.
Right. You know, it, it, and, and also I want to make, make a point on this slide too. That's a small point, but an important one that uh, according to this, um, this agent, they have about 10% of their future predictive business um, is coming from open houses. So, you know, just a quick reminder that if you're not doing open houses, boy, you're missing out. And I imagine, Ryan, when you By the you way, that's $4 million, that's $4 million, by the way, in just wow. open houses. Amazing. You and, know, and, so, I'm sorry. And then, and, no, 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 I, I just wanted to make the point that then the question becomes, okay, how do we then – increase the the relationship with that lead and now they now they move from you know from a open house lead to a to a warmer lead or yeah correct yeah and do you know what an open house lead is too it's your open house lead is your future network yeah which will then refer you people so network referral so that four million dollars could turn into 16 million dollars over the next two years in referrals it's a great business if you aren't driving blindfolded Right. So you need to know your business. You need to look at it. And it's something to be taken serious, right? It's something that's going to take work. It's going to take your time. It's going to take your attention. You know, get the right ne- technology. We are actually uh, in next year going to be, you know, we're offering this to other companies and other real estate agents. So starting in January, February, people can actually purchase this technology and start using it. Um, but, you know, if, if, if you don't get something, it's out there. You need to track your business. Um, and you really should work on this thing. You, it, it, it should be open, uh, every, you know, five days a week yeah. for, for one hour. You should be somewhat in silence looking through it and then gosh, get somebody else to look at it for you. They're going to see things that you don't see. That's where the coaching and, comes into play. And, and, and that's too, again, just the art of writing it all down and having a system where you can look at your active prospects, you can look at their whys, you know, you can look at where they're at. Uh, in the sales process and then start to figure out, okay, they're here. How do I get them to the next level? Is it, do I need to engage them more on a personal level? Do I need to pay more attention to what they're doing? As Ryan says, use social media as research and development, find out what they're into so you can have hey. conversations. Yeah. 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 yeah you're right. You research can, and development. You like, I, you remember that. I do one. like that. Um, yeah, it makes, it makes perfect sense is, is Facebook is not just a place to necessarily promote your listings, it's although not. you can certainly do that, but you can also sure. use it to deepen relationships. And the, but one of the best sure. ways to do it is see what your, um, your, I mean, it's funny. I was, I was just on vacation for a few different times in the last month. I was very lucky to be able to do that. And, um, and whenever somebody would post a response to one of my dopey Instagram, you know, photos of me and my girlfriend, you know, it just makes you feel like they're noticing sure. and paying attention. And this is something you've been teaching uh, and to do it in an authentic way, of course, not just to right. you know, write comments to write comments, but to say, wow, you, you know, I, many people did that. And it, it does, uh, there's a psychological satisfaction of having somebody acknowledge what you're doing on a personal level and, and, and sort of celebrate that with you. And, and that's right. one of the ways, just one of the many ways you can use to deepen relationships. That's correct. Absolutely. Um, and it's not about you. It's about them. It's about your network. Right. And uh, the number one, uh, uh, Gosh, uh, I can't remember the name, but uh, it's significance uh, that the the, um, uh, the psychiatrist who came up with this. I can't I can't remember. Like, it, but maybe Ab- Abraham Maslow. Maybe he had his Maslow. hierarchy of needs. Exa- yeah, you're brilliant. It's Maslow's <laughs> hierarchy of needs. The number one is significance. Yeah. We we're looking for significance to be significant. Make them yeah. feel significant. And Facebook is an, and Instagram are amazing tools to research your network, and then develop a relationship with them by giving them significance. I guess the point of, of, of this entire conversation is, is about, you know, uh, having, having a modeling system, having something that, that you can look at that isn't overwhelming, but at the same point give, guides you uh, with the help of, of, of coaching uh, or, or someone else that, that can help you. But basically looking at what, what's the future look like, uh, where are your clients coming from, where are they at currently, and then what are the drivers to actually increase that that production um yeah and and, and, and where are the deficits you know oh gosh i realize i'm may, maybe that agent goes i'm only getting 10 percent of my business from open houses i need to do more open houses or maybe they say that's exactly where i want to be the point is they know because it's there they can make that decision of what that number means to them but if you mm-hmm. don't know you don't know and and if that agent goes you know i really didn't do that many open houses this year i'd like to i'd like to double that because i'm gonna that's gonna increase the number of people that enter my network and, you know, they, again, whatever decisions they want to make based on the data, it, at least they'd have the data to be able to then figure out where they want to go from there. 
Yeah, well, we have other we have other elements of the of this, and we you know one is is, is what we call a network tab, um, and uh, we categorize them all differently. But the network tab is, um, you know, this now moves into what activities are you doing to drive stuff for that snapshot, and then we then we get into the coaching, and and then we get into analytics on uh, how well are you adding significance to these people's life, how involved are you, how well do you know them, how well do you know them. Not about them knowing you, it's about you knowing them, right? Um, which is counter to what we most think. You know, there's you know, marketing is marketing should be simple. It's set it and forget it, and it, it's it's more about consistency, and um, and and then then it's you the the base, you know, the base of your concoction should be your relationship building activities, and uh, you get that right, just like you saw the other person. You'll be doing anywhere from fifteen to forty million dollars. Again, these aren't teams, these are individual agents. Um, five years ago, weren't in the business. Um, it's incredible. Following the system, being coachable, that's the most important thing. Um, you know, some people just aren't coachable. But if you could be coachable and follow the lead, you're going to get these results. I have I was... not seen or met anybody that hasn't achieved these types of results. I have who haven't followed it. And have, sure freestyled and that's fine but if you follow you know this gps this system it'll get you to where you want to go well and part of it too um i i was uh at an event not that long ago and somebody raised their hand and they said oh you know my friend decided to go with a different realtor and it really bummed me out and it was probably her first experience and of course that that happens to all realtors it certainly can happen to anybody um, and, and I wish I would have said to her at the time, I didn't think of it until afterwards was, well, okay, let's, let's just, you know, look, things happen and you're not going to win every deal. And sometimes your friends are going to go with someone else, but you know, what were you doing along the way other than just assuming your friend's going to work with you? Were you, did you know their, their, their birthday? Did you call them on their birthday? Did you find out what their work anniversary is? Do you know where they work? Are you checking the news to see if anything's going on at their workplace? So you can reach out and say, Hey, I just saw this is happening. How you doing? Or, you know, what were well, you doing to deepen those? And that's what your CRM allows people to do. Yes, EOS. I'm just teasing you. Um, but yes, <laughs> but also, DJ, what's really important for the psychology of us as producers, salespeople, right? Whatever you want to call us, real estate loan officers, is that you have to take the bad with the good. Yes. You guys, you're not going to get them all. And it's sure. okay. It is okay. As long as you're controlling the controllables, which are your activities, you're going to get that eight out of 10. You have to lose the two. It's not a big deal though. I mean, it hurts. I get it. Um, but the best way to recover from that is realize, oh, look at the abundance of other businesses that I, business that I already have. That stinks, but look at what else I have and look at the more that's coming and that snapshot, right? That diagram will show it to you. It, it really comes into play in, in February when you know we're just starting our year and be like, oh gosh, I don't know if this year is going well. Look at your forecast. Your forecast right. to do $8 million. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, well, you click on this tab and look at it. You know, if you are 90% certain they're going to transact, and sure, you might not have anything going on for the past two weeks because everybody's just getting over the holiday hangovers and they're, you know, just getting back in the groove. But we have 10 more months of the year and here's where you are. So a lot of uh, success in our business, in life in general, 80% um, of it is really your mindset and your attitude. And you really got to take the time to um, – to get yourself from that right mindset, use this tools and this technology, be like, Hey, it's there. And yeah, you have a real estate agent and their friend used somebody else. It's okay. It's going to happen. Sure. What else do you have? What activities are you doing? What are you controlling? What controllables do you have control over? Um, you don't have control over that. You have control over your activities, your daily activities and what else you have in the pipeline. And we all know this when it happens, what we, when, when we, when we lose a deal or, or when we, you know, our, our business isn't exactly where we want it to be. We pretty much know where we fell short or where we, if we screwed up, where we screwed up or, but what we, what we don't often think about is how do we look at everything in a snapshot format? Like how do I actually see where I'm at? And then I can actually go and figure out 
what are those daily disciplines to, that, that I can start doing now to actually mm-hmm. course correct? And, and that's, again, this whole idea of actually being able to see uh, your future business in front of you and your current business really tells you the full story and tells you wh- wh- where you need to make adjustments. And if you don't have that, you're just reacting to things one-offs as they're coming in. Somebody doesn't use you and it devastates you. And instead, of course it does. But then you can go back to your snapshot and say, you know what, but I'm closing 80% of the other people that are, that are choosing right. to work with me. So I'm, so, okay, I'm going to assume a, a, you know, a 20% or whatever number that is. But if you don't know that everything just seems like the biggest deal in the world, because you're reacting to it in the moment. Totally, totally. And you know, and then it, there, it comes down to where it's a numbers game. Sure. I mean, it really is. I mean, 16% of your network will transact every year. So if you have 200 people that you are actually dedicated in creating a relationship with them over the course of a lifetime or even a career, and um, if you do it properly for a good first 12 to 18 months, you're looking at 32 to 64 transactions every year out of just those 200 people. It does not include referrals from them. I mean, right. there's so much out there. And for the agents out there that are listening to this and they say, well, I don't have a network. Well, it's because you're choosing not to. Right. And we have a plan. Right. And I don't mean like we as a company, it's just, it's, it's simple out there. It's like, it's, it's, there's a plan to have a different lifestyle. That's why you've gotten this business, but, you know, follow, follow the direction, get, get, get somebody to help you out there and create a network. Sure. I'll take a year to two years. So what? I mean, nothing, you know, that comes quick lasts long, I guess, or whatever that expression yeah. You're right. You know what I mean? It takes, it takes work. You know, everybody overestimates what they can achieve in a year and they underestimate what they can achieve in a decade. And it's the short sighted. That's foolish. It's the not looking downfield and thinking long-term and thinking, if I do this for a year and a half to two years, what can my life look like the next seven, 10, 20 years out? And uh, there is that compound effect that if you do this properly for just 12 months and then continue it every year, every week, every month, every quarter, and every year out, um, everything gets easier. Life gets easier. You get more time. You get more business and you have more time with your family. Um, a lot of good comes from it. Um, but um, it's you. It's you that needs to work. It's you that needs to change. It's me that always has to change. If I want more, I've got to become more. And it's, it's, it's just loving the process, loving the journey of working on yourself and working on your business. Well, it's the same thing you've always said about health. If, if you want to have the energy to be able to support all of these clients, if you want to get, for example, if you're a yeah. $2 million producer and you want to get to 20 million and that's yeah. your goal, you better have the energy of a $20 million person. I don't mean the yeah. energy of a showman who is able to, I mean the energy right. to support that many clients. And so it starts with everything counts, right? So yeah. if you're thinking, okay, I'm at 2 million. Um, but I'm tired all the time. It's like, okay, maybe it's now time to evaluate, you know, my diet and exercise routines because right. maybe, maybe there are things I'm doing to sabotage and not intentionally. We, we all have challenges, but maybe there are things I'm doing that aren't supportive of getting to $20 million. Maybe I'm not reaching out to my network enough. Maybe I'm not deepening those relationships and, and having a, having a snapshot like that again, tells the beginning of the story of, okay, here's where I need to go from here. Here's what I need right. to do. And remember, the snapshot's 20% of it, but but you're going back. I was telling my wife the other day, um, you know, it's like, I'm like an athlete. I got to take care of myself because there's so much I'm doing. There's so much energy going on. Um, You know, I love that glass of wine. We just can't have them five nights a week, (laughs) even though we want to, you know. um, it's There's just a lot of demand that this business um, calls uh, from you as an individual. you really got to, you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. So I, I think that's a great place to, to end up. And, and I encourage everyone to watch if you, if not, not for our own, uh, uh, download count, but I really want people to, if you're listening to this, I really encourage you, as Ryan said, we we're going to, this will be on YouTube. This will also be on Facebook. Um, and we have the slides in the notes of, of, but I encourage you to watch because as Ryan was talking, he was highlighting things. He was showing you with his, with his, uh, cursor, what he was looking at. And it, it'll certainly make a lot more sense. And it's really important to see the 
the visual here because it, it's really neat. And if you find yourself saying, I don't have that, well then either find tools that exist that do that. Ryan's going to be releasing uh, his entrepreneur operating system, uh, you know, ne early next year. Or if you're here in the local Chicago area or, or Michigan, Indiana, Wisconsin, Ryan's, uh, you know, they have offices and, and they offer these tools to their agents, of course, in addition, coupled with the coaching. So it's one thing to have the tools. It's another thing to have somebody helping you look at it and go, okay, here's some opportunities. Here's some adjustments to make. Um, and Ryan, if there is, if there are agents out there that are interested in lurking to see what your firm offers, uh, should, what's the best way? Obviously they can visit the website, diaprioproperties.com. Yep. Um, what, uh, it, it, and there's a contact form on there. Is that really the best way? There is. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have, uh, you know, eight strategic coaches at the company. Um, you could call my, my cell phone. Uh, I, I'll give it out. 312-590-6416. Uh, Texting is probably easier. Um, we'll get you in. We'll have a conversation with you. We'll, you know, uh, talk about a plan, the future, you know, what you want. And then we'll just create a diagram to help you get there. It's, it's simple. And now is a great time to think about systems. What are the systems I have and where can they be improved? And having tools like this and, and coaching like this is, is really what helps. Again, everyone listening, you don't have to do this all yourself. There are, there is every you shouldn't topic, be doing it by yourself. Well, every professional athlete has a coach probably in the world. Uh, oh, you know, maybe it there's goes beyond that. It's like, you, yeah. you know, it's not, not even like marketing, you know, let's just take it over for you. Let's just take it over. Let's do it for you. Let's do that. Yeah. You get, you know, um, Sharma, I love this man. Um, his expression is uh, uh, distraction is the, oh my gosh. Uh, what is it? Distraction is the enemy of progress. Distraction yeah. is the enemy of progress. So, you know, dial in, you know, dial it in to what adds the most value to your business. Quite honestly, that you and your relationships you have and right. uh, the, the transaction outside of it, you know, kind of comes automatic. Um, but then there's people to coach you on those tasks and what you need to do. Yeah, get the tools, get the coaching, um, and continue to, to listen to our show because our show is all about both of those things, coaching and tools. By listening to our, the top producers we interview as well as coaches like Ryan, um, you know, this is what this show is all about. So as we're wrapping up, I want to ask the, the, real, the, the listeners who are, are mostly realtors to do two quick things for us. One, to help support our show so we continue to bring this great content to you. Please tell a friend. Think of one other real estate professional that could benefit from hearing or watching this particular episode and shoot them a link. Somebody that you know is trying to get to the next level and maybe doesn't have the tools in place. Show them that these tools exist. Send them over um, and, and hopefully that will help grow them grow their business and it also helps us uh, as well. And then the second thing is to please follow us on Facebook. So we broadcast every episode live as we're recording it uh, with, with video on Facebook and we of course uh, post an article every single day that we find online specifically written to help you grow your business. So that's facebook.com forward slash keeping it real pod. Also any agents in the, in the Chicagoland area, Indiana, Wisconsin, uh, Michigan as well. Um, if you're looking for a firm that offers these kind of tools and coaching, daprilproperties.com is the place to go. Or uh, you can text Ryan as he gave that number as well. So Ryan, thank you so much once again. And My pleasure. Uh, Enjoy uh, Lake Geneva, and uh, I'll, I'll hopefully be coming up there soon, bothering you uh, for, a, for a boat ride or something. Uh, Time to get on the boat. Sounds good. I thanks, will. DJ. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Take care. I'll see you.